Hi, this is Craig Barr, and what I'm going to do is go over uh, a very quick um, tip and trick here, essentially, for creating vector displacement maps out of existing geometry um, for your sculpting workflow. So more precisely, creating stamps or stencils, um, vector displacement stamps and stencils, from an existing piece of geometry that you might want to use in your sculpting workflow. I've been asked that a few times, so I'm going to do a quick video just to show you how you can get started on that. and um, and be able to work up a library of these things based off of existing models and pieces of models as well. So first thing you want to do regardless of what it is that you're going to use is just create a basic plane. And the reason why we're going to do this is we're going to create a displacement map from a piece of geometry essentially and that will be our starting point um, to sculpt with. So here's my little basic plane in here and then I'm going to bring in a model that I'm, I want to essentially work with here. I'm going to just bring in this little car model. So this is an old beat up scrap car model and I'm going to transform it to bring it uh, let's just select that and scale this guy. So we want to fill that plane. The plane here is essentially going to represent the background for our displacement map um, that we want to create in here. So I'm just going to transform this guy. All I'm doing right now is everything above the plane in the Y up direction is essentially going to be um, what we're going to capture on our displacement map. So that's fine. I'm just kind of centering it in the geometry and that should do. We'll keep it about uh, midway through the tires and that's fine. So uh, what I can do is just deselect that there. So I'm just using the transformation tools, the select move tools to place it in there. Another thing to note, um, you're always going to be working in the Y up. So we are going to be working kind of bird's eye view from the top camera looking down, which we're going to switch to here in a moment. So your geometry or the way that you want to capture it, you want to have it facing Y up or or kind of in the, the bird's eye view direction here as well. So while we're in uh, talking about that, let's jump into the object list here and if you right click on the cameras in here, any of these cameras in here at all, you'll see that you get um, a look through. So go to your top camera, select that, right click on that and put click look through. We're now looking through the top orthographic camera in there. And if we want, if we don't want to see this grid at any time, you can just turn your grid off with the display menu at the top here. So you can see for this, I'm using Mudbox 2011 for this um, here, but any uh, I'm not doing anything too crazy in here that's any different from the Subscription Advantage Pack or 2011 or something that you can use in Mudbox 2010 as well or of course Mudbox 2012. So what I'm doing here now is I'm just positioning the plane to essentially fill up my viewport and the reason why I want to do that is that we're going to use the screen space in here to render out a simple quick displacement map out of this here. So a couple ways that we can do that. We're going to take a look at two ways that we can do this. If I jump into the viewport filters and hit screen distance, that's essentially um, like a, a Z depth or a Z depth um, preview uh, within your viewport. And that will actually give us displacement. Right here, if I even did a quick screen grab off of that, that would work as a displacement map. So we do have a couple of options here. I could hit save 16-bit image and actually save this out um, with the way I've got my viewport in here framed. The reason why I'm dragging this over, if I turn this off here, is I want to kind of keep this uh, square into this here. Now, I'm not getting too fussy with how accurate we need this to be. All we really want to do is grab that detail and be able to use it to start sculpting with in here. So um, I'm just going to uh, create that. And then what I could actually do is go to the render window up here and use save screen image. And if I click use screen size, you'll see, you'll see the width and height will adjust to that. Now I'm recording this at a bit of a smaller resolution for, for this video here, but um, you can actually just hit that to use your screen size to bring it into an approximate square. You can see we're not right dead on. That doesn't matter. Um, and we actually can go into save image and I'm going to call this my car dmap. I'm going to call it 1 because we're actually going to do 2. And then I can save this in whatever file format I want. PNG, BMP, TIFF, um, uh, JPEG um, format here as well. The, the key thing to note um, for this, uh, let's just save this as a PNG for here. The In doing this, this essentially this screen grabbing or save screen image, I'm limited to an 8-bit image. Now this is important. An 8-bit image isn't going to give me as much depth or detail uh, captured in my displacement map. So 
if, if you if you really uh, want something quick and dirty, this is a great way to do it. If you want something with a little more accuracy, with a lot more detail, or capturing more of the the depth of it, the best way to do it. And at this point, you don't need the screen distance on, and in fact, you don't even need to format your screen in here, and you don't even need to be in the top view in this. But you do have to do a few more little settings in here. Is go to Maps, Extract Texture Maps, New Operation, and then select the Displacement Map function here. I'm just going to try to bring this into the, the view here so you can see it here. So I'm just using a displacement map in my um, Extract Texture Maps UI. And then the quickest way to do this is just hit on your target models for the low resolution mesh. That is what we're going to bake to. Hit All, add all in there. And then Mesh 1 is my little car model. I'm going to remove that. And then my source models here as well. I can add all of them in here and then remove the plane. I should note actually before we do this, I'm just quickly grabbing this geometry to use this as a starting point. I can certainly, let's just jump out and show this here, I can certainly jump in uh, to this model here and give it a little bit of subdivision just to smooth it out. It's not a bad idea to do that as well. So let's go back to our operation here. Uh, my extraction operation one, that's going to get us right back to what we had set up. And what I'm doing is I'm taking my source model, which is the car mesh here. I've subdivided it, so I'm going to take the top level on there. And then we're going to use the base mesh, um, or the uh, target model is our base plane mesh to bake that displacement map to. Now, we're going to do this quick here. So just with the search distance, hit best guess, and it's going to give you an approximate best guess based off of how you want to choose the samples. Because this model extrudes out quite a bit, or, or doesn't necessarily extrude out, but sticks out quite a bit from the plane, I'm going to use furthest outside for that. And of course, the locate method we're going to use for ray casting. Set your image size that you want to do this all the way up to 8K. Because I'm just using this as a starting point, 1K is fine. Um, Anti-aliasing, you can turn that on if you really want to grab a lot of, um, preserve a lot of the details in there. And of course, if you want more details, go up in a bigger resolution map on there. Now here's the interesting thing here is if we jump into how we want to save that, we now have all of the options in here. Uh, with the save screen, screen image, we did not have those different options. So in here we can go all the way from 8-bit all the way up to 32-bit floating point. And 32-bit floating point is going to store the absolute most detail in there for your creation of a displacement map. 16-bit um, will do a great job as well. 8-bit you're going to get a lot of artifacts in it, but if you just need something quick, that's a good way to do it. So we can actually go ahead and save that map out. Let's do something here in kind of a 16-bit format, maybe in there. We'll just call it test uh, two, or actually, let's call it car car test two. And we can just extract that map out in there. Uh, let's put some of that in here. If I just hit extract on that, it's very fast. You can see this isn't really complex geometry I'm using in here. I'm just using a simple, the simple car mesh. You can see I've selected anti-aliasing. It's going to calculate that out. And my map extraction has finished. So that's great. So just to jump ahead to show uh, what we're doing in here now, um, we're going to create a whole new scene. And let's grab, I'm just going to display the grid back in here. And let's go back and create a simple mesh, another plane. And let's show our results here that we have. So I'm going to put a new layer in there. And I'm just subdividing this up. So let's bring up um, some good resolution on here. I'm actually going to bring this guy up to about 1.6 million. And the idea behind this, I'm not going to jump into a full sculpting workflow. I just want to keep this quick and short. Is here I have a displacement map in here that I've uh, previously rendered out using the exact same process that we just did. And with my sculpt brush here, um, we can set the strength of it. This will be fine, I think, for this. And the difference here with a regular displacement and vector displacement are actually many things. Aside from details that vector displacements can store, because you're working with 32-bit uh, floating point uh, compared to uh, the limitations of a regular displacement map, um, you're limited to just looking straight down on a, on a displacement map, right? So you're not going to get any of those um, kind of undercuts and overhangs that a vector displacement map is going to give you. So that's what we want to do with this. So now we have our starting point. We've essentially effectively taken a piece of geometry, made a displacement map, and you can see it's not really pretty. It's quite broken up. It's quite blocky. Well, that's where I can start to 
uh, work with some of my sculpting tools in here and just start to maybe smooth out some of these kind of faceted looks on here. Um, again, I'm not going to spend too much time on the focus of it. This is where you need to get creative with it and sculpt it to what it is that you need or want to do with it. So uh, we could smooth that out and then we could start to sculpt in some more details onto this car. And then uh, one of the things I did with this here is I jumped into the pose tool tray and I was able to actually bend or warp the car over so that I could get some kind of overhangs and, and different things that a regular displacement map can't give me. And just to jump ahead, let's create a new layer. Here is my final vector displacement map. And just to show the result of this here, um, let's jump back to our sculpt tool and I'm going to crank that all the way up. And then with the vector displacement map, I've gone ahead and added some more details in here. So I put a bunch of debris and scrap um, on the ground there. But the interesting thing to note is as I'm pulling this up and in here, um, aside from my little scrap details that I've put on the ground, it's important to know what's happening with the geometry. It's not just pulling straight up. It's taking the data from that vector displacement map and it's actually completely accurately uh, uh, representing what I did with that geometry when I sculpted from my starting simple displacement map um, now into this full vector displacement map. So it's actually pulling it out at a bunch of different angles in there. So uh, let's just quit out of that brush there. And you'll see now, if we look from a side view, we have this um, car is on an angle and on a slant. And we have a bunch of different details in there that a regular displacement map isn't going to as easily store. And you can see the smoothings coming through quite nicely on there as well. So we're actually able to get this car um, kind of these kind of pushed in bottom areas here underneath the wheel. So you can see that a regular displacement map is not going to give you these this angled car. Um, it's going to give you just a very boxed straight in look. Um, with this, with a vector displacement map, we're getting an accurate representation of what I've done with the sculpt there. So, um, I just again to save time, I've, I've dropped in that vector displacement map to show you how this worked here. So that's essentially what the process is. Start with your basic regular displacement map and now start to sculpt it. Use things like the pose tools to, to warp it, deform it, uh, sculpt up, get creative with whatever it is you want to do with whatever object you're working with with sculpting. And then end up with your final sculpt here with some nice overhangs and different things like that. Now you want to store this as a map. The process is very much the same as extracting a displacement map, uh, except we want to select vector displacement map to extract. And then within here, exact same idea, I can go ahead and, and um, I have my plane, I don't have my, my car geometry in here because I'm working with a new scene, so it's already set this up for me. I'm using the plane at base level zero, and my source model here is the top subdivision level, which is level seven. We're going to leave it at that. And then, uh, because we're using vector displacement, it's not going to give me any ray casting options. It's just using a subdivision method to capture this. And then I can make it whatever resolution I want. Um, in this case, I believe this image here is just a simple 1K. Um, and then uh, anti-aliasing is not a bad idea uh, to keep it nice and smooth. Uh, set your vector space for um, sculpting for a stamp or stencil. Leave it as tangent. That's fine. And then the nice thing is it's only going to give you the option for 32-bit floating point. And if we go in, you'll see we only have a TIFF or OpenEXR option there to store floating uh, the, the four channels in there, the 32-bit floating point uh, bit depth of that, that image. And then once you've stored that out, you can now start building a library up of these different things. So um, uh, this is actually something I used for a trash monster creature where I relied on a bunch of different pieces of junk to hammer into uh, his body to, to build it up into this way. So um, that's just a quick overview of how to do that, how to get to a vector displacement map from pieces of geometry. So take any kind of models that you ha you currently have that or old models that you want to use and don't be afraid to break them up or uh, chip pieces of the model off and then you can essentially sculpt them into a form that you want to work with and store that as a vector displacement map. Anyways, uh, I hope that was helpful. Be sure to check out the Mudroom blog on the Autodesk site on thearea.com and I uh, hope to see you in there. Thanks.